powered by the Montana Television Network. This is the Noon News from Montana's News Leader. A very good Friday afternoon and thanks so much for joining us here on the Noon News. I'm Samantha Sullivan. After a two hour hearing, a Senate panel passed a bill that could keep Montana's largest coal fire power plants operating in coal strip. Northwestern Energy could buy the plants for just one dollar. MTN's Mike Dennison explains. Under Senate Bill 278, Northwestern could buy part or all of coal strip plants three and four and an associated power line from its other owners, primarily other utilities in Washington and Oregon. These utilities have said they'd like to get out of coal, and Northwestern would buy the plants for one dollar. This bill creates the opportunity for Northwestern to explore options with the other owners, or some of them, to acquire a larger interest at no cost to our customers and increase our ability to provide reliable and affordable electricity on a 24 by 7 basis. Supporters of the bill, including organized labor, said it's a chance to save these plants from premature closure and the jobs and tax benefits that come with them. I would say it's a give, a, give coal strip a chance bill. But the bill also says any other costs associated with Northwestern's ownership, operation, maintenance, additional investment, cleanup, must be covered by Northwestern's customers, the ratepayers. Opponents said it amounts to a blank check for Northwestern with no oversight by the Public Service Commission. But I would not be surprised if Senate Bill 278, if passed, were the largest blank check given to a utility by its customer in the history of Montana regulation and probably the entirety of the United States. But Republicans on the Senate Energy Committee, including coal strip Senator Duane Ackney, quickly approved the bill Thursday, sending it to the Senate floor. And of course I've got, you know, I'm I'm in this thing. You know, I'm there. I live there. I mean, these guys that work there are my best friends. But that aside, you're still getting something for nothing. Democrats on the panel said if acquiring coal strip is good for Montana and ratepayers, why does the bill cut out the regulators? Why, does, why do we have to do, have an end around the Public Service Commission? Why, why can't we go through the normal Public Service Commission process? They'd have to be crazy to turn it down, wouldn't they? No one really answered that question. But now the bill is heading here to the Senate floor, where no doubt we'll hear another spirited debate. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. The Senate floor debate will likely occur next week. While well, lawmakers in the Montana House are giving their approval to bills which would limit the authority of cities and towns to pass their own ordinances reg regulating firearms, House Bill 325 and 375, introduced by Republican Matt Riger of Columbia Falls, would limit the power of local governments. This comes after the city of Missoula passed a controversial ordinance a couple of years ago requiring background checks for firearms sold at gun shows within city limits. Backers of the measure believe the ordinance closed the so-called gun show loophole, but opponents say it steps beyond the authority granted to the cities to regulate firearms under the Montana Constitution. The Montana Senate will review the bills next. And now we'll turn things over to Ed in the Weather Center. Ed, it's looking like it's going to be a snowy weekend for a lot of places, not just Montana. That's for sure. Yeah, we started off with a lot of snow and we've had a lot of people down in Arizona sharing pictures. This was just oh, about 20 miles north of Phoenix up to some of the higher elevations this morning. Flagstaff yesterday, three feet of new snow and you can see the snow that has the effect there this morning we had some brilliant colors thanks for linda for sharing your picture of some of the frost up into the trees but we'll see more snow along the way as we get into the weekend as well We'll start off with some lighter snow amounts and some much colder air moving back into the region. It's just the beginning as we get into the weekend. We'll break down all the forecast details for you in just a few minutes. All right, thanks, Ed. Two former Anaconda High School basketball players are facing felony rape charges in connection with an incident two years ago in Hamilton. Ravalli County court documents say Matthew Stephen Ryan and Kenyon Keller Kelliger, both 19 years old, faced charges of sexual intercourse without consent. Documents say the two men had sexual contact with a 14-year-old girl after a basketball tournament in Hamilton back in February of 2017. The two are expected to appear in Ravalli County Court later this month. 
A Billings teen accused of raping four girls will be tried as an adult. Last summer, 17-year-old Braden Pond was charged with five counts of sexual assault without consent. The allegations stem from 2016 to May of 2017, where two incidents occurred in a Walmart parking lot, one at a house party and another two in Pond's truck. Pond agreed to waive his right to a transfer hearing to determine whether the case could move to a juvenile court. The judge ordered a jury trial for January of 2020. The Federal Bureau of Investigation released its findings on the human remains found on the Blackfeet Indian Reservation late last year. In a press release, the FBI says an anthropological analysis suggests the remains are of probable historic or ancient origin. They also estimate the remains are of a Native American male between 45 to 60 years old. The remains will be returned to the Blackfeet Tribal Historic Reservation Office. Initially, some speculated the remains belonged to a missing woman, but that was ruled out. New details in the case of an 18-year-old Blackfeet woman who was found covered in bruises and dead in her car. Now the FBI says the death is accidental. Investigators say based on evidence gathered and processed, they determined there was no violation of federal law. An autopsy performed by the Montana Department of Justice Forensic Science Division determined Mad Plume's cause of death was acute ethanol intoxication, which is also known as alcohol poisoning. Mad Plume was found dead in Browning on January 12th. Service arrangements have been scheduled to honor the life of Jason Baker. The Great Falls firefighter died Wednesday after a two-year-long battle with cancer. The memorial service will be held Tuesday, February 26th at 2 p.m. That service will be open to the public at the Great Falls Civic Center and a reception will follow. Jason Baker was diagnosed with stage 4 lung cancer back in October of 2016. He was forced to retire from Great Falls Fire Rescue at the end of 2017. Baker used his illness as a platform to promote health and safety for firefighters across the state of Montana. Jason Baker was 45 years old and leaves behind a wife and two children. In other news this afternoon, hospitals across Montana are experiencing an influx of patients in their emergency rooms, and it's so severe, one Billings hospital is placing patients in conference room and evaluating them in hallways. Billings Clinic made that announcement Thursday morning. They've reached the highest level, black, on their capacity scale. The influx in patients began about three weeks ago and is due in part to peak influenza season. Hospital staff encourages anyone with the flu or any other minor injuries or illnesses to call the nurse helpline or visit same day care or an express care clinic before they rush to the ER. This is not a crisis situation at all. We're, we're, we're certainly managing our patients with, I believe we're, our patients are getting outstanding safe patient care, but this is a situation where uh, this is impacting our flows, that we do need people to understand the wait times are going to be longer. St. Vincent Healthcare, another hospital in Billings, issued a similar alert last week, saying it too is experiencing a higher than normal patient load and also encourages its patients to use walk-in clinics or their primary care physician. The Bozeman School District narrowed down a list of names for their new high school to 19. The district put together a naming committee consisting of students, parents, teachers, and other community members. That committee will narrow down the list to three and give the recommendation to the school board. The community can still submit mascot and color ideas through March 8th. Well, coming up here on the new news, one of the most famous owners in the NFL facing charges after a Florida sex sting. Those details when we come back. But first, it'll be another good weekend to stay indoors. Ed joins us with a full statewide forecast coming up right after the break. Watching MTN News with Samantha Sullivan, Storm Tracker Weather with Ed McIntosh, and Farm and Ranch News from the Northern Ag Network. This is the new news on Q2, Montana's news leader.